The origins of the Roman legions, which became famous for their exploits in expanding and maintaining territories under Roman control, date back to the period of the Roman Republic in the 5th century BC. At that time, the Roman Republic had two consuls as top leaders. To ensure military power between them, each consul commanded two legions. Thus, Rome had only four legions to ensure that the Republic was safe from danger. They were numbered legios 1 to 4, with legio 1 being considered the most prestigious. After the Republic and Civil Wars, Rome went through the period of empire, which lasted about 500 years. According to some historians, it existed from 27 BC until 476 AD. This was made possible, mainly, by its exceptional and almost invincible army, formed by the Roman legions. The Roman legions were troops with well-defined organization and hierarchies. The recruitment of legionaries was carried out by the various provinces of the empire. The legions were composed of men aged 16 to 46 years, distributed among the legions by lot. The youngest were included in the Velites, while the older ones were assigned to the Hastati and Principes. The eldest were assigned to the Triary. Each legion had a number, a name, and a zodiac symbol, usually linked to the time of creation of the legion that bore it. The signs were important in Roman culture and had an almost religious treatment, indicating characteristics of those who possessed them, with luck or wisdom. Even in Republican times, the legions adopted the maniple, a type of military standard, bearing images such as wolves, bears, horses, or minotaurs. Consul Marius adopted the eagle as a standardized symbol for all legions. Each legion had its Aquila, as it was called by the Romans, which was initially made of silver, and then later made of gold. It was chosen because it had an important mystical significance for the Romans. It symbolized the bird consecrated to Jupiter, maximum god of Roman mythology, and father of Mars, the god of war. The loss of the Aquila was a great shame for the legion. However, retrieving an eagle lost to the enemy was a highly celebrated event, increasing the reputation of the general responsible for the feat. During the Republic, each legionnaire had to provide his own uniform, armament, and equipment. With the changes implemented by the consul Gaius Marius in 104 BC, Rome began to provide uniforms, armament and equipment to conscripts. In the imperial period, the Roman legion consisted mostly of conscripts, but also had volunteers. Civilian life skills were incorporated by the legion. Soon, blacksmiths became armorers, tailors oversaw repairs to uniforms, among other professions. Those who did not have civilian skills to incorporate were assigned to artillery or other areas. However, during battles, everyone was employed in the ranks for combat. Slaves were not accepted in the Roman legions. Marriage was forbidden for legionaries. If the legionary enlisted already married, his marriage was annulled, and he had to wait for his time of service to end before he could officiate the marriage. This was changed in the year 197 AD, when Emperor Septimus Severus amended legislation to allow the marriage of legionaries. The imperial legionnaire's primary weapon was the pilum or javelin. Each legionnaire carried two to three javelins. The shortest measured 152 centimeters, while the longest measured 213 centimeters. They were made so that, after being thrown, their own weight would bend the tip of the dart when it hit the target. This would prevent the dart from being reused by enemies against the Romans. The legionaries carried a short sword, the gladius, 50 centimeters long, with a double blade and tip to allow thrusts. Spanish steel was preferred to produce gladius, which led to it being called the Spanish sword. The legionaries carried the gladius in the scabbard on their right side of the body while the officers carried it on the left side. The legionnaire also owned a dagger, called Pugio. The legionnaire's shield, 
cold sputum, was curved, and elongated, convex in shape. It was 121 cm long and 75 cm wide. Its thickness, at the edge, was the width of a palm. It was made with two layers of wood glued together. The outer surface was covered with canvas and then, with smooth calfskin, glued in place. The edges of the shield had iron strips, as protection against sword blows and wear. The center of the shield was fixed with an iron or bronze protrusion, to which the handle was attached on the inner side. Thus, the legionnaire could deflect the blows of swords, javelins, and stones. The legion's emblem was painted over its leather surface. The shield was always carried on the left side when in battle. When on the march, the shield was placed in a leather shield to prevent wear and tear from the sun and rain. The artillery and siege weapons of the Roman legions were made up of stone throwers, called ballistas, by cohort and a metal dart thrower, called Scorpio, by century. The longer-range Onager catapult was used from 200 BC onwards. The stones thrown by the ballistas and Onegers had a weight that varied from 0.9 to 163 kilograms, with a range of up to 365 meters. The legionaries wore a tunic, the color of which is still a matter of discussion among historians. Red, yellow, or white are some options. Over their tunic, the legionaries wore a sleeveless quilted vest. Over the vest, they wore an armored vest. It was this vest that gave the legionnaires heavy infantry status. At the beginning of the first century, the Larica Segmentata entered service, made up of solid metal segments joined by bronze hinges and held together by leather straps covering the torso and shoulders. On their heads, legionaries wore a conical helmet of bronze or iron. Most had metal flaps that were tied under the chin, as well as a projection for the back, to protect the back of the neck. According to historical research, some type of fabric covering was possibly used under the helmet to make its use more comfortable. The cruciform reinforcement on the Roman helmet appeared after the defeat of a legion against the Dacians in the year 86, who used a sword with a curved blade. In the period of the Republic, heavy troops used eagle feathers on their helmets to appear taller, as in the Hastati troops. The helmet was the only equipment that the legionnaire was allowed to remove to dig trenches or build fortifications. Legionnaires also wore leather sandals, called Caligulae, which left their toes exposed. It was these sandals that gave the son of Caesar Germanicus the nickname Caligula. During the winter, one in four legionaries could take a vacation by paying a specific fee to their centurion. Vacationing legionaries left most of their equipment with their legion, traveling in legionary sandals and with sword and dagger. The training of the legions was daily. Flavius Josephus recorded that drills were bloodless battles, while battles were bloody drills. The officer responsible for training the legions was called Opidio. Training involved the use of swords and other weapons, marching in formation, and infantry maneuvers. Legion formations involve line, oblique and crescent formation. For defense against cavalry, an incomplete square was used. The ring formation, called orbis, was used as a last resort by a besieged force. The famous testudo, or turtle, was used for protection against arrows, launches and stones, especially when the legion tried to conquer a wall or fortress. In the time of Gaius Marius, legionaries also trained in races with full equipment. Legionnaire's breakfast was usually a glass of water, followed by a cold snack or piece of bread at lunchtime. The main meal was dinner. The drink was wine diluted in water, and legionnaires drunk were rare. Musicians accompanied the troops to issue orders on marches and battles. They moved unarmed and played a kind of primitive trumpet, made of wood, covered with leather, and curved horn, called lituus. Contrary to what is shown in the films, there is no historical record of musicians playing music during marches. Julius Caesar regarded the centurion as the backbone of the army. In the imperial era, the centurion was a legionnaire who ascended from soldier. In the beginning, the centurion commanded a century, which, in the republican era, represented a group of 100 legionaries. It evolved so that they were divided into different degrees, depending on whether the centuries, the maniples, or the cohorts of the legion commanded. 
Every century had its centurion. His deputy was OPTIO, responsible for keeping records and training the century. The standard formation for battle had 10 legionnaires in width and 8 in depth, with the space of 3 meters between each legionnaire. At the beginning of the battle, the legionaries threw their javelins and then used their swords. The spacing between them was so that auxiliary troops could retreat past the legionaries. At a given moment, the legionaries were ordered to close ranks, gather shields, and advance against the enemy. In battle, the centurion was the first man on the left side of the century. Tessarius was last on the left in the back row, while Opidio remained on the far right, in the rear. He had to keep the century in order and avoid defections. At the time of Augustus, each century consisted of 80 legionnaires, including the centurion, the tessari, and the opidio. They were formed by 10 contubernium, groups of 8 legionaries who were the smallest fractions of the Roman legions. Each contubernium occupied the same tent, cooked together, ate their meals together, fought together, and died together. Each cohort consisted of 6 centuries, totaling 480 legionaries. The cohort had its own centurion. At that time, the legion was composed of nine cohorts of 480 legionaries each, plus a reinforced legion, the first cohort, with 800 legionaries, with the responsibility of protecting L'Aquila from the legion and its commander. Augustus also added to the legion a cavalry squadron of 128 legionaries. Thus, counting the 59 centurions and other specific officers, the Roman legion totaled 5,248 legionaries. There were also auxiliary troops, formed by foreigners. A Roman legion could receive an equivalent number of auxiliary troops, thus totaling about 10,000 men. There were also legionaries who served with the two Roman fleets, in Messinum and in Ravenna, and in other smaller fleets. Forerunners of today's marines, these legionaries were trained to operate catapults that launched flaming darts from their ships at opposing ships. They were also prepared for hand-to-hand -hand combat, throwing javelins at the crew of enemy ships, usually from turrets built on the deck of the Roman vessel. They were responsible for boarding enemy ships and acted as firefighters in the largest Roman ports, such as Ustia and Messinum. As well as supporting the growth of the Roman Empire, the Roman legions disappeared with the decline of Rome. However, they left priceless legacies in history. Even today, the formations of modern armies follow the idea of formation and hierarchy created by the Romans. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and write your comments. Share with your friends. This is very important for the growth of the channel and to produce more videos about world military history. See you in the next video. Goodbye.